This video was brought to you by our backers on Patreon like Tay T. Support the channel by clicking the link below. It's pretty safe to say that Europe's borders are relatively uncontroversial. Okay, okay, they're relatively less controversial than in some other areas of the world where borders are still being actively fought over. But that's not to say that all European borders are completely fixed, with some regions still fighting for independence, including Kosovo. So in this video, let's take a look at the history of Kosovo and whether or not they ought to become a country of their own. We made a video like this on the TLDR Global channel recently, where we discussed Somaliland, that's linked below. And like in that video, this one's going to be split into three parts. Kosovo's history, Kosovo today, and whether Kosovo should be recognised going forward. First, the history. Without getting too bogged down in the ancient origins of Kosovo, let's roll the clock back to 1912, just before the Balkan Wars. At this point, the territory formed part of the Greater Ottoman Empire. Well, until the Balkan Wars, that is, where the Ottoman Empire was defeated and lost a significant proportion of their territory, with Serbia regaining control over Kosovo once again. It would then take five years for Kosovo to formally be absorbed into the Kingdom of Serbia. Fast forward some 23 years, and at the height of the Second World War in 1941, Kosovo transfers hands again. This time, the Italian-controlled Albania. After the war ended, in 1946, it was absorbed into the wider Yugoslav Federation as an autonomous province of Serbia, which is where things began to get interesting. At this point, the 1947 Yugoslav constitution enshrined Kosovo's autonomous status, widely seen as the first step on the path to full independence. Well, that would have been the case, had it not been for a separatist uprising which, in 1989, led to Serbian President Slobodan Milosevic reversing Kosovo's autonomous status and imposing direct rule from Belgrade. In response, ethnic Albanian leaders who had been cast out from government by Milosevic established a parallel government and subsequent armed resistance, the Kosovo Liberation Army. This, combined with the breakup of Yugoslavia, meant an armed conflict ensued very soon after, culminating in a NATO ultimatum in September 1998. President Milosevic ultimately failed to come to an agreement, which gave NATO the excuse it needed to intervene forcefully. NATO launched airstrikes over the course of 78 days before an agreement was finally reached. Troops would be withdrawn from Kosovo, with the UN establishing a Kosovo peacekeeping force backed by NATO. The United Nations Security Council subsequently adopted Resolution 1244, which authorised the broader deployment of the international security apparatus and formally established the United Nations Interim Administration Mission in Kosovo. This is, however, far from the end of the dispute by any stretch of the imagination. Even with a power-sharing agreement in place, in 2004, violent clashes occurred between the Serbs and ethnic Albanians, leading to the death of 19 people. Such deadly clashes led to the contact group getting involved. Originally established to deal with the situation in Bosnia, the contact group is an informal grouping of countries made up of the US, UK, France, Germany, Italy and Russia, who collectively have influenced and continue to influence the course of events in the Balkans. In November 2005, they produced guiding principles with regards to Kosovo and the dispute over its status. Said guiding principles included no return to deadly clashes or confrontations no changes to Kosovo's borders, as well as no partition or union of Kosovo with a neighbouring state. Within a few years, on the 17th of February 2008, Kosovo unilaterally declared independence. The very, very next day, the United States, the UK and France formally recognised Kosovo as a sovereign and independent state. Serbia, backed by Russia, nonetheless rejected said declaration, claiming it was illegitimate. Even still, the UN began to slowly but surely transfer its power towards a national government in the country, made up of mostly ethnic Albanians. That meant that by 2011, backed by the European Union, talks of normalising relations between Kosovo and Serbia could begin, albeit without much optimism. A year later, in 2012, the nations that stepped in to support Kosovo, alongside the UN withdrawal, formally ended their supervisory role. The next milestone came in April 2013, a breakthrough, an agreement. 
Formally entitled The First Agreement of Principles Governing the Normalization of Relations, but no more commonly as just the Brussels Agreement, Serbia and Kosovo agreed on a community of Serb municipalities, as well as several key matters of security, all of which was deemed substantial enough progress for the European Commission to formally recommend that negotiations be opened with Serbia on the matter of fully-fledged accession to the EU as well as opening up negotiations with Kosovo on a stabilisation and association agreement, the precursor to accession to the EU. Despite the EU's optimism though, this agreement didn't state that Serbia formally recognised Kosovo as a sovereign equal. Then if we fast forward seven years, we find yet another agreement, because in September 2020, under President Trump, Serbia and Kosovo signed an economic normalisation agreement. The most notable clause of which being, Kosovo will agree to implement a one-year moratorium on seeking new membership into international organisations. Serbia will agree to a one-year moratorium on its de-recognition campaign, and will refrain from formally or informally requesting any state or international organisation not to recognise Kosovo as an independent state. In simple terms, we'll stop trying to join international organisations, and you'll stop lobbying them against us. But after all of that, where do things stand today? And why isn't Kosovo recognised as a sovereign state? As we've already established, Serbia was incredibly quick to reject Kosovo's declaration of independence back in 2008, but they'd soon be joined by the likes of China, Spain, Cyprus, Slovakia, Romania and Greece to name just a few. But if you look at this set of countries to reject Kosovo independence, you'll notice an immediate pattern they're all EU member states, and the fact that they're all EU member states causes a huge headache. Due to a lack of consensus on Kosovo's sovereignty, neither Serbia nor Kosovo, as things stand, are on a viable path to accession to the European Union. In spite of the European Commission's decision to open up negotiations with Serbia and Kosovo, the fact is that there's diplomatic unease within existing member states that makes the progress of said negotiations a political minefield. For instance, the Spanish rejection of Kosovo independence especially is more of an issue of domestic politics than anything to do with Kosovo in particular. Were they to accept the unilateral declaration of independence from Kosovo, or any other state or region for that matter, it would put enormous pressure on the Spanish government to allow Catalonia to do the same, something it wishes to avoid at all costs. Political wrangling aside, does Kosovo actually meet the conditions to be an independent country? There's far from a consensus on what makes a country a country, but Kosovo has its own legislative assembly, defined borders, is a member of the IMF and World Bank, conducts its own foreign affairs, and has its own economic independence. So it certainly ticks a lot of the boxes. In fact, the matter of Kosovo independence has actually been settled by an international court. That's because in October 2008, the United Nations General Assembly requested that the International Court of Justice ruled whether or not the unilateral declaration of independence by Kosovo was in accordance with international law. In July 2010, the court did just that concluding that the declaration did not violate international law. So, case closed then. Why have we even made a video on this? Well, because it's actually far more nuanced than just this legal opinion. As the US highlights in their evidence to the court, a declaration of independence cannot violate any principle of territorial integrity because that applies to states, not internal entities. In any case, whether a country is a country is not simply down to legalities, but recognition. What makes a country an independent sovereign state is the simple fact that it's seen as an independent sovereign state by others. And, well, it seems that not everyone can agree when it comes to Kosovo, with not even the EU having an agreement on it. But what do you think? Does Kosovo meet the criteria for sovereign state status? If not, then what's missing? And should other countries continue to hold out on what would be Europe's newest nation? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. As I said at the start, videos like this are made possible by our Patreon backers. In return for their support, they get a whole variety of perks, from early access to videos, exclusive live events, merch discounts, and more. Find out what you can get and sign up by clicking the link in the description. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video.